Welcome, folks, to the Corporation Nation Radio Program. I'm back today. Yes, indeed, it is Friday, the 28th of March, 2014. Welcome to the show. I uh, <laughs> and my ever um, weirder trip into uh, into wound fund. I uh, I broke the skin broke yesterday on my back and. Turns out it's basically boils, uh, what they call a carbuncle, carbuncle, which is a series of basically, um, anyway, I've got this very strange, strange, oh, dirty mayonnaise looking stuff coming out of my back right now. It's very unpleasant, thought you'd like to know. Hope you're not eating right now. It's dinner time. Um, so I, the pain, the pressure uh, is not so bad. I'm not in as much pain. So at least I'm on the uh, over the hump here, and at least I know what the heck was going on. Um, I uh, don't know how to explain it. I lost about 15 pounds. Maybe I released something within the within the the, the fat layers that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, my body didn't like, and it just uh, revolted. I, who knows? Oh, good times. My guest today, after that lovely introduction, uh, my guest today is Tammy Pepperman. Very pleased to have Tammy back. She was with us about a month ago. Her websites are chooseyoursside.org and te- tammypepperman.com. And Tammy is also on uh, the radio. Uh, she's actually in the t- same time spl- slot as me on Thursday and also on Saturday at freedomslips. Oh, what is it? Dot org. Welcome to the show, Tammy. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you it's know, it's always were... such a pleasure. I, I just, I love your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well. We work well together, I guess. That's what it boils down to. Um, you, you, you were very well received last time you were here. Um, so, of course, we had to have you back. I, I wanted to talk to you today about about something that seems to be a controlling factor in, in, in a lot of things, and that's the, the, the whole concept of what insurance actually is when it comes to the insuring, the, obviously the word sewer in there, the sewer name. But, uh, you know, you have so many different forms of insurance that a lot of them I don't even think people really even consider. Uh, you know, an example would be, you know, when every soldier dies, <clears throat> government insures its investments. It's not insuring those investments for for the family to get su- support and help after the death it's it's actually a commodity that soldier is and when that soldier is killed in action or other um the government is is paid quite a bit of money uh for the control of that uh, surname and that's what's being insured so i wanted to really hit this kind of hard today because it seems to be if, correct me if i'm wrong it seems to be the basis for a lot of things, securities and everything else. Everything. It, it's the foundation of the medical industry, the psychological industry, and the legal industry, which is everything that everybody knows. Insurance is what the game is. And um, it's actually called guarantee insurance. There's only actually three forms. There's guarantee, judicial, and commercial and these all stem from the mutual ventures that Congress entered into in the 1600s when they came and started taking human beings by letters patent, finding them and and offering them that legal name, finding them, picking them up in hospitals, which are banks. Um, Those banks since 1945 have been controlled by the United Nations uh, that is a bank charter. The 1945 United Nations Charter establishes those hospitals as banks where you deposit human beings or posture. That's of a posture deposit. And in that, uh, genocide can be facilitated in a more swift manner. <laughs> so and true. If, if that does not incur, occur, uh, the 
situation would not be what we have today. The United Nations, of course, being each county, each county is a foreign nation as defined by 28 U.S.C. subsection 1603. Each commercial enterprise is a county or a foreign nation. And this includes Google, Microsoft, Orange County, L.A. County, Michigan, California, front to back, side to side. This is all in insurance and it all facilitates the action of genocide against the human populace. Well, so insurance, I mean, when, when the average person thinks of insurance, they think I'm going to pay, I'm going to sign a contract, uh, which turns out to be a, basically a financial uh, instrument. I'm going to sign this and it says that I'm going to pay a premium and if I get into trouble, there's a list of things that this and this policy will, will pay out. And, uh, you know, when it ends, it ends. If I get life insurance, I'll have somehow miraculously have a, a, a big, huge pay, payout at the end that there's no way they could have possibly collected enough to pay. What's actually happening when we fill out an application? I mean, let's start at the beginning. I, we fill out an application for insurance. What, what the heck happens? I mean, you're creating a what? Well, and that application is in the form of a driver's license application. That ensures that you're going to be doing business as that franchise name. Um, insurance is a welfare application. Insurance is a uh, insurance application or a credit application. All of these things are under policies written by Congress. Each life insurance policy is ensuring the life of each corporation, each national foreign state, since the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, where Lincoln said that now the corporation is a person which has rights and uh, all available access to be living over the citizen, which was given nothing in the 14th Amendment. The citizen is born or naturalized. That's it. The person is the one that got all the rights, and that's why we're dealing with what we're dealing with now. And so each time you enter into that business license of driving, which is a driver's license, you are underwriting those policies. You're the guarantee that backs those policies because you're subscribing to that state. You're patronizing that state and at that time, you are an underwriter. You are subscribing, underwriting insurance policies. Sure enough, to insure actually um, is defined as to underwrite, to practice uh, making insurance. Um, to be insured is to be made sure, to be assured, um, secured against loss. Um <laughs> it's funny, it has insur uh, uh, insurgent there, too. It's kind of funny. All right, folks, welcome back to the Corporation Nation. We're delving into the corporation today, and we're delving into its uh, seedy underbelly. We're under <laughs> into its underwriting. What, what does it mean to be underwritten? What does it mean to underwrite? Subscription. You know, and, and just like Jesus said, don't call anybody else your father. Don't patronize it. Don't partake of the tree of knowledge, which only bears concepts. That's subscribing. You're underwriting everything that's occurring upon you. Humanity has been underwriting these policies for years and years simply by patronizing it, subscribing. And that's what it takes. It, it has its authority. Power is vested in Congress, of course. It has its authority when everybody patronizes it and asks it to represent them. But Congress means with transgression. That's your transgressor. That's the thing in the garden. It's taking the garden as it sells you concepts born of the tree of knowledge that happens to kill you, which is what? Civil death. Because you're patronizing something else, you're entering into a state of death, civil death, because you have abjured the realm, you are the king. Congress came here and said, oh, we own this, all this property. And you said, yeah, okay, you can represent me. You know, and it's just, it's, I laugh when I'm nervous, and I'm sorry about that. But 
this is the most profound time now it was during this awakening when humanity and law enforcement has both awakened finally and we're seeing the results of that now now is when revelation is occurring now is when senators are being picked up every other day attorneys are being picked up every day judges are being picked up every day and these psychopaths are being removed from the ability to harm which is what jesus intended all along and if you pay attention at all to the mainstream media the great city is on fire babel is falling as we speak because the whore of babylon which is us we're the ones that have been fornicating with congress we've asked it to go ahead and take our estates take my body you have jurisdiction go ahead and do whatever you're going to do now that the whore of babylon has no longer contracted now we're saying the, the law merchant whale which is what the intent of all of us all of our work every day every moment every breath we take is to take humanity out of of being within the action of genocide and remove all threat upon mankind and that's that's where we're at now and it's just so it's overwhelming for me because as we've walked along we've all been educated we've all walked through this same experience and um you know been sidelined a time or two or three and and uh to see it actually coming to fruition i never ever thought that i would see that in my lifetime i was my original intent was to lessen the harm upon my children but heck if we can remove it that's even better now you used the uh, i i agree i i i per perhaps not as uh, optimistic about the future as as you may be but i i do see some pretty pretty finally some corruption being uh, being answered to which you know the problem of course as you well know is that the you know how can you have corruption when there is very little law in place to deal with that corruption when you have a congress that has its own ethics committee uh, that decides what is ethical or not you know, I compare that to a, a prison ethics committee where the prisoners decide whether the other prisoners are, are doing things that are, uh, you know, ethical or not. Of course, they all know each other and they all know each other's crimes, so it's nothing but honor among thieves. So no, no case ever gets out of the Senate ethics committee, not even the worst kind of bribery or anything, because they decide, well, no, no, this case doesn't have merit, so we're not going to send it to a judge. So, I mean, how do you expect to have any law when the law itself is completely lawless i mean it's it's you know legal legal versus lawful is uh you're seeing it <laughs> unfold into itself i guess right and and what happened was we we began evidencing all of their criminal acts and on record and we ended up facilitating the United States court, establishing the United States court after condemnation of their court. They no longer have the commission for the ethics commission. Their commission through the treasury ended in October. That was what everybody saw as the government shut down. They lost their treasury access. Um, they were given another chance by the House of Lords to rectify the situation, which was what everybody saw. Uh, they got enough money to maintain the overhead for another month they did it again we were able to evidence again and by november that yes indeed they were perpetrating genocide against humanity they were not protecting humanity using those treasury monies and so now at this time there is no ethics commission there's a presentation there's uh diane feinstein getting up there and, and saying look the cia is 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 all up in my business and everything else she is the chair of the senate intelligence committee she is the director <laughs> of the cia and, yeah, and, pretty much. You know, but all of these things, these presentations, they, they're they're trying to keep this going, but it it's failing. And that that was Jezebel. The media is Jezebel. That's the thing that's providing you all of these miraculous things and all of these presentations. Disappearing planes. I mean, this is just it's it's just like this bad <laughs> B-less movie. Yeah, it was funny how how much attention that got the disappearing plane. Well, I mean, you're you're playing a little bit off nine eleven there to, to spook people back into their <clears throat> their old fears. But uh, you know, what, while we're on this subject, why don't you explain 
Um, because there's this thing out there about the Federal Reserve, and I've had this conversation a lot. I've done a lot of research on it. But what I didn't quite understand when I was doing my research is that the Treasury was actually separated from, uh, as a separate entity from the United States. And when the president was given what I call the dictatorial you know, emergency powers back in 1933, um, it actually says that both the president and the secretary of the Treasury, um, you know, everything that they do from from whatever 1914 uh heretofore and here to after basically everything is 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 approved in other words congress approves whatever the president whatever the president's actions are you know from this date uh until somehow that gets stopped well of course that's never been repealed so explain how the treasury was actually separated from uh the central government and and what that actually means well, what they did was they were doing, um, I would call it insider trading. Um, what had happened was the original commission went to the taxing agency, which is the court. Those were the original banks in the 1789 Judiciary Act. So these banks, there were 13 of them established according to the 13 colonies. The Treasury was paying those banks to protect humankind and maintain them on general welfare as according to Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2 of the Constitution. Well, they wanted to come in and make more money. They're supposed to be putting the money back into the Treasury if it's not used for humanity. They've never once done that. Well, come along to the last bankruptcy, and this isn't the first bankruptcy um, of 1933. The Federal Reserve was created to maintain more uh, a, a more effective means of moving that money around by reservation. So they were re reserving rights superior to somebody else, which in turn steals somebody else's rights. So on the offshoot there, they're maintaining derivatives through the court process. And so they're hiding those monies, they're hiding the treasury monies, and all in all, they're not protecting anybody. They're not protecting any females under feminism. They're not protecting any children under the Crimes Against Children Act. You're not protecting anybody. All right, relative. folks, we'll be back. Sorry, Tim, we've got to cut you off. We're in the Corporation Nation. We're here with Tammy Pepperman today. Choose your side.org and tap Tammy Pepperman. Uh, dot, oh, I always remember the dot com. And, uh, well, you know, there's, <laughs> to, again, to understand how this insurance thing works. You know, you have to understand the structure that we're talking about. And I am learning along with uh, with my listeners today. Some of my listeners probably know more than I do. Uh, but when we're talking about a bank, you know, the term bank is a very interesting word because it can be used in so many different ways. Now, we have magistrates in the federal courts uh, which we call judges, but in, in truth, they're magistrates. But you see, the problem is court is a bank. So to say that judges are the ones that are writing insurance policy, <laughs> it gets a little confusing for people. The governor is also a, a, a magistrate, defined as a magistrate. So let's go back in time here and, and, and maybe bring people forward because this has been going on for so long. To tell, to explain what an E4 was for us. Um, an E4, sorry, the connection was um, messing up. The Spartan E4s were the original magistrates, and they're the ones that were developing policy and politics by which to move human beings and human traffic human beings. And now, in the relative sense of now, it is now the Federal Magistrates and Judicial Association. Those are the same E-4s as what was back at Sparta or what was defined as Sparta because if you go back into uh, Spartan and Greek history, it's actually interpreted by attorneys for the benefit of mankind. So this business model was actually developed by attorneys. And it all stems from the Homeric hymns all the way back to Homer, which was writing these fictional tales and then those fictional tales were interpreted for us by attorneys, such as George Crowett. Uh, there's eight volumes on the history of Greece that's pulled out of the Iliad, 
the Odyssey by Homer, you know, Homeric hymns, and uh, those were fictions. You know, we were just, we've been maintained as human stock through the action of education, and that's what we're dealing with now. We've been indoctrinated to believe in culture and nationalities and all of these different uh, new species, new genus designed by corporations by which we can buy rights. Um, if they sell us the concept, we buy the rights and benefits that come with those concepts. So you, you, you know, most women or most females have bought uh, women's rights. Most, uh, most African Americans have bought uh, equal rights. Most these are all concepts that are that are basically uh, double-edged swords. You think you're getting something good, but in fact, oh yeah, not 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 quite what you thought. No, um, by subscribing, you're underwriting that policy by claiming to be black or white or female or male or any other genus outside of the human race you're subscribing and you're underwriting those insurance policies you're, you're claiming a status to give right. you some some benefit over other over other men or equal to other men interesting um so the e4s were basically the magistrates sort of like we we choose uh, we choose our judges although federal judges are they are they even voted for by people or are they appointed by pre they're appointed by presidents aren't they Right, they're appointed, and they just hold together the whole schematic. When you go to uh, 28 U.S.C. subsection 453, you see the judge's oath. They have an oath to discharge congressional bankruptcy. Okay, so so all the way back in the in the time of Sparta. Now it says here that the e floors were were five, and they were intended as a check. Which, <laughs> on the on the on the regal power, according to some writers, on the Senate. That's from Milford. Um, of course, if government itself is choosing who its check is, it's not really a check, is it? Absolutely not. And it's the same thing now with um, the Federal Magistrate and Ju Judges Association. If you go into their uh, checking maneuvers now the e4s have transferred or uh, been moved over since 1974 with the inspector general's act into the inspector generals and now it's called the uh, federal transparency board or some something like that thanks to blah blah, blah. <laughs> so it makes it, it makes it look nice it makes it look special and something pleasing but it's absolutely not pleasing at all in that act they insured all of those deposits that are deposited in the hospital so human beings are first deposited in banks hospitals are banks courts are banks and then uh, the federal deposit insurance corporation insures them again on top of that on top of the human being being the security on the on these mortgage mortgage backed securities that means a human being the security is a human being and it's measured by its productive value and then human being is an interesting word in, in and of itself um, because that's also I mean I've heard it defined as monster I've heard it defined in several different ways uh, animal uh, is, right. is another way so which what, are you are you speaking of, of, of a legal degradation, or are you talking about... Absolutely not. Um, okay. That definition of monster out of Ballantine, it refers to the attorney, the, the monster that is not of human blood. It says it's not of human blood. It just looks like the human being. And the monster is actually attorney or psychopath. The thing that is not all the way human, but it looks like a human or acts like a human. Mm. And, that, and that's what we're dealing with. When you go all the way back before Greece, before Sparta, when all of this first began and the attorney or the psychopath had come in, it's actually the war is still ongoing with Cro-Magnon man and Neanderthal. The human being is Neanderthal. We are the evolved species. Cro-Magnon doesn't have a frontal lobe. It is not evolved. And, and the actions upon humanity these genocidal actions are maintaining our populace so that they can control us um human being does not consider uh, another being as a monetary value it does not consider another human being as a value or a, a something to count the psychopath does and and that's where you see 
the depopulation coming in. That's where you see, you know, you got to cut the overhead like they did in Nazi Germany. That was the Bear Corporation, the attorneys coming in and indemnifying Poland through court process. And that was Congress's world courts that Congress owns. I suppose the I suppose that the war the reason that we're always you know we're always thinking why does the the the, the <laughs> why does the does the worst of the crop not the cream of the crop but the 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 worst spoiled part of the crop always rise to the top why do the most corrupt always seem to get to the top of the political and the banking and everything else and I guess that's probably why right just because um they've redefined survival as of the fittest maintaining that whoever has the fattest pocketbook or whoever has the most voice which is the introduction of media into the populace the media itself is a weight it's a weight of of measure and so when somebody can control the media such as the bbg.gov the Broadcasting Board of Governors has international control of all civil media. And in that, they have the greater weight or the greater value in the human mind until now. Now, when we're able to be aware, when we're able to be awakened and divesting of all of this, these concepts that are fed to us day after day through television programming. Now, the human mind is the greatest computer there is. When you apply television programming, you're comp- programming that mind to be whatever you want it to be through constant application, constant media influence, and, and that's how they've done it. And again, uh, we spoke about the um, treatise on education before a meal. That is the way of breaking the human being down so it can be owned, so it can be manipulated. It is done through education, which stems from the word pedagogy, meaning attendance on boys. That's the removal of the firstborn son, is to teach you that you are corporate stock, to teach you to live as a fiction. I was just going to ask what... uh what the origin of the word education is, I've, I've never looked. And I do remember the word pedagogy, certainly. What okay. does it mean again? Uh, uh, it means, pedagogy means education, comma, attendance on boys. That, that's what it is. You, uh, you, you, you used the word, oh, of course now I forgot the word, uh, of, 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 of children. It was, um, was it a testing? No, it was... Uh, the purpose of education is pedagogy, and they take the firstborn, and what the heck did you say? <laughs> attendance on boys. Attendance, yes. What does that mean, attendance? Well, when you go to the um, etymology, I just had it. Huh. Wow. Okay, uh, just one second. I'll have it. I put it in your... The Skype as well. I just forgot oh. to uh, leave that page open. Um, pedagogy, of course, means education or attendance on boys. And then you've got um, attendance. It, it's it's a form of counting things. Um, let me go get the etymology here. Sorry about the weight. Oh, it's okay. They're used to it. They're used to my absent-mindedness sometimes. It comes from the late 14th century act of attending to one's duties from old French attendance, attention, weight, hope, expectation from attendant, present participle of attender, meaning action of waiting on someone. Dates from late 14th century to dance attendance on someone in the late 1560s. That of action of being present, presenting oneself, originally with intent of taking a part in is from mid 15th century meaning number of persons present is from 1835 and what it is it's an accounting mechanism when you're attending on boys or attendance on boys you're Mm -hmm. ensuring that they become something that you want them to be and 20 years ago uh, the title was politically correct everybody started calling everybody else politically correct that is not human. That is good for politics. That's not good for humanity. Yeah. All right. Well, so back to this insurance thing. So we talked about the E4s, and they were the magistrates. And the, the courts, of course, we still have magistrates in courts. Courts are banks. 
Um, they handled the court registry investment system, which is part of U.S. code as well. I can't remember the numbers like you do. But um, so back to insurance. What, you know, insurance seems to be a word that means, again, something completely uh, you know, different than what 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 we're used to it meaning. It it seems to have a a deeper meaning that I don't fully quite grasp yet. So let's keep Absolutely. going on this. Okay, so there's there's three different forms of guarantee insurance, of course, which is fidelity, judicial, and commercial. And in this, you have you're going to have foot soldiers, especially if you're a corporation that relies on insurance. You're going to have people on the ground that are facilitating these things. Now, which corporations? Just, which corporations rely on insurance? Let's just let's just put it out on the table. The United States incorporated itself. All right. And each uh, franchise now, each franchise is through insurance a commission state stemming from each state constitution. So it depends on when they came into the perpetual union established way back when at the um, Articles of Confederation. Though each article is an article of incorporation. Each treaty and each charter are the terms of these insurance policies. So you have acts that are telling you what's going to ensure something's going to happen. And the easiest way to explain it, I guess, is through federal emergency management. So if you go to your state right now and you look up the emergency rules under your state's administrative code, which is not statute, this is a different code, um, you'll find that each state of emergency refers to human beings. These are states of being and these are means of institutionalizing human beings. So the insurance policy is the Federal Emergency um, Management Act, or FEMA, and each county ensures that those things are going to occur. Now today I was writing or, or researching and having to deal with um, another murder that has happened within this corporate structure and so when I go back into these policies and into these directors of course I have to go through these medical industries and in one for example I will just bring up one in in um, Michigan the health centers of family health care you can find them on familyhealthcare.org board of directors now, the trustees of this bank are Gerald Anderson, Lake County, retired, uh, Reverend Lawrence Doom, Lake County, retired, Ruth Ann Harris, Nuego County, retired, Eric Rudart, Nuego County Rudart Agency Insurance, and Corey Van Fleet, Lake County, retired. So there's an insurance corporation that owns this hospital, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... If they want to guarantee such as death derivatives, how is that made possible? Well, they're killing patients. Okay, we just had the evidence of this, and and in this case, this is actually regarding Joseph Reynolds. Uh Uh-oh, did we lose you, Tammy? Oh, shoot. Did we lose the signal, or are we... Oh, man. All right. Imagine that. Hospitals intentionally killing people. I can't imagine. No more than I can imagine our military hiring the Mossad to kill our people. I I can't imagine. No, I can't imagine. Um, uh, Tammy, we got you back. (laughs) <laughs> oh shoot well interesting stuff now uh we'll try to get uh we'll try to get tammy to tammy back here um one of the words that she uses uh, i find to be an interesting word and i hear her say it a lot and i finally just looked it up it's, it's the word abjuration she says, you know, basically you abjure from the realm. So let me read this to you from, uh, from, from the 1828 dictionary. It says, abjuration, or to abjure, 
is the act of adjuring a renunciation upon oath as an abjuration of the realm by which a person swears to leave the country and never to return. It is used also for the oath of renunciation. Formerly in England, felons taking refuge in a church and confessing their guilt could not be arrested and tried, but might save their lives by adjuring the realm. Uh, abjuring, excuse me, the realm. Uh, that is, by taking an oath to quit the kingdom forever. Um, it's also defined as a, an, a rejection or denial with solemn, solemn, <laughs> say, I hate these words, solemnity. Uh, a total abandonment as an abjuration of uh, heresy. So, to abjure is to renounce upon an oath to abandon, uh, to abjure allegiance to a prince uh, as. Um, to renounce or reject with solemnity, um, to reject as to abjure errors, abjure reason, to recant or to retract or to banish. So, boy, I, I can't tell if that's a, uh, if that's a good thing or a, a bad thing. And, but it sounds to me like the way she was using it, um, we are abjuring from the realm of God and entering into the world of man. I don't know if we have Tammy back to answer that riddle. We don't. Well, well, well. <sighs> well, we'll try to fix that over the break. We'll get her back. Sounds like I hear music anyway. <laughs> but, what's that? I am. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, all right, folks, welcome back. You're in the Corporation Nation. My guest today, Tammy Pepperman from ChooseYourSide.org and Tep Tammy Pepperman. Uh, dot com. T Tammy, tell people how they can uh, listen to your shows as well. Um, well, Clint and I have uh, been on together as well with on uh, Revolution Radio at FreedomSlips.com. Um, I'm on Thursday nights, which competes with, with Clint. So don't do that. You can catch me on YouTube at uh, Talk Revolution Radio on YouTube uh, for the archives. That way you don't have to miss Clint's show. And I'm also on on Saturday night, 6 to 8 p.m. on Studio B at freedomslips.com as well. I don't know how you could possibly do your show knowing that I'm on at the same time. It's it's just got to be... <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Just well, it is. It is. It really is for me because I I don't miss your show except for on Thursday nights when I'm doing my show, which it's an irritant uh, to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, your show. I, I appreciate it. It's good to know. Um, I, we were just looking up the you know speaking of the word abjure. Uh, interesting because the the term a b. Uh, well, before we discovered that the word injure to injure somebody is, is really means to take something or someone into the law. So in law, basically. So the opposite of that, of course, would be to abjure. Um, and the word ab a b actually is a prefix, of course, and it stands for. Uh, from or separating uh, or a departure from. So when 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 we're talking about this term, and I've heard this term before, I never really gave it much uh, you know consideration until now. But an abjuration of the realm, that that realm is referring to what? Your law, your sovereignty. You're giving up your entire state by being represented by somebody else that's what you're asking for as representation but being represented they're turning you into a negotiable instrument now you're not you anymore you're something else and that's where you come in with the hypothecation the letter a is a hypothetical person it stands in your place so a baby boy a baby girl that means something else is there in your place to represent you and then you go forward in, into the law as soon as you get into the law itself you're determined by being a black acre or a white acre which is a fictional tract of land 
That's what they mean by territories, territory seized. You're under seizure called deceased. And which means of Caesar. And then when you go all the way back and, and, you know, look at the metaphor of Caesar, it's the Caesar of all things under courts of Assisi. These are just courts of seizure. You're the thing being seized. You're being called all sorts of things, including birds. Uh, Article 1, Section uh, 9. Uh, clause one indicates that you migrated and were imported here. So therefore, the United States Incorporated is going to preserve you under 16 U.S.C. 7 and call you an animal. And you're subjugated as an animal under uh, Title 7. It defines animal as one of them being man. And therefore, you're just on their farm. This stems all the way back from the uh, Forest and Chases Charter or somebody's claiming to be the king, saying it's their land, and you're just lurking there. You're just walking along and, and bugging them. And that's the whole concept of these diagnoses is stemming from bottom rebonds, and they're saying it's happening in the water. You bumped into their vessel, therefore they found you, they're picking you up, and they're diagnosing you as what? Injured. And that facilitates that bottom rebond, that facilitates the action of garnering those small government loans from the SBA.gov. Now it's called the Small Business Administration. Uh, you can find the QCIP, uh participation program, the Devonshire Participation Program, through going to SBA.gov, Small Business Administration.gov. And you'll find what they take loans out. It's based on your productive value. Now, debenture itself is defined as a debt secured by your own productive value. So you're not securing any loans. You're actually securing the debt, which is relative to Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. You're pledged and charged to discharge congressional bankruptcy, thanks to Congress. They said that's your pleasure. Now, this term black acre and white acre, um, I, I, I haven't found that anywhere but in Black's Law Dictionary, and it, and it, it, it basically refers to a, a, a piece of land uh, that has a fictitious name. Um, and as I understand it, that's, that's what they refer to us as, correct? And, and, and it's actually supposedly one of the most coveted acres that there is, uh, over the actual land. Um, explain what a black acre is. Oh, come on now. This girl is tackling things that you people need to know about, and <laughs> that he don't want you to know about. I'm telling you, some of the things we are not talking about... Uh, <laughs> we're not going to talk about today until the uh, some of the processes are finished. Uh, hopefully we'll have another show with Tammy to talk about what's happening with uh, with her friend who uh, was kidnapped unlawfully. And, um, you know, we had, they, they have, it's, it's, they're going after the insuring agency um, for lots of money for that particular case. Uh, she doesn't want to talk about that until the case is actually over. Um, but she does want to, she does want and probably won't talk about what's going on in, the, in these hospitals. Like I said, the, you have a you have a a literal. I mean, think about who who again rises to the top. Who? Why are there so many Jewish doctors, for instance? So many Jewish lawyers. Why? Why do you think that is? Well, it, it's all designed as a presentation. It's just like the designation of the Amish. They're all actors. Uh, they present one thing, and, and as they act in commerce, and then they're telling you in their text that they're not acting in commerce. And these things allow the division of humankind. If you're Muslim and I'm Christian, we don't like each other. Or if you're Jew and I'm Catholic, Oh, I think we lost her again. It's just... <laughs> Uh, well, shoot. Unfortunately, maybe, maybe Tammy can call in or... Uh, okay. Sounds good. Um, 
uh, while we were talking about <laughs> really what I was referring to were people with, again, that lack of the frontal lobe, the lack of empathy and the lack of, uh, I mean, I've been the victim of hospital fraud before. I have gone in there and been cut into by by some random doctor that just came in and cut me open. And I'm, I, I, I guess he wasn't supposed to and, uh, you know, cut a big piece out of me. Uh, unfortunately, it was the right surgery, but uh, and then he, uh, I was left there for about forty-five minutes with this big open wound, um, and no one to to clean me up or or stitch me up or anything. That's that's Kaiser Permanente for you. Um, way back when, I mean, I was diagnosed, misdiagnosed so many times. I can't tell you the things that they do in hospitals today. Make me feel like nothing more than a growth medium. Welcome back. You're in the Corporation Nation. And a tactic that works very good to disrupt the conversation, of course, is the classic cutting in and out of conversations to cease the, the flow of the conversation. Congratulations, it worked. I can't remember where to begin and where to end. So, yeah, good job, boys. It, it, it works real well. But we're going to keep doing it. So you're going to have to pay extra attention. Right? Whenever I have certain guests on, you're going to have to really, you know, take special care to um, <sighs> to screw with us. <laughs> and I know, oh. Tammy, you're used to this. So, I mean. It is. Their handlers have my fee schedule. So whatever they're attempting to do, it's always espionage. I'm not a citizen of the United States Incorporated. Um, I am the United States. And uh, the clerk of the United States, and you're impeding my ability to communicate with other states. And, and uh, you find it espionage under 18 U.S.C. Sub, subsection 794. And, and uh, it, it's sad, but each time uh, this is facilitated, your handlers aren't going to tell you. They just pick you up and use you to discharge their new bankrupt state, which is very sad. But if you watch the mainstream media, you can see this taking place and. Secret Service agents accidentally being shot in the head and calling it suicide. And there was one uh, Russian agent that was that they sort of committed suicide by by zipping himself into a duffel bag and then locking it from the outside without leaving any fingerprints on the lock. That's how much the handlers think of them. So whoever's listening or whoever wants to listen, be advised that your handlers don't think anything of you. <laughs> yeah, that includes you, military. Yep. <laughs> if only more of them would listen. They did, and, and it was so sad. Months ago, they came in, and, and the, when we cut their funding through the Treasury, they came in and said 650,000 federal employees may not have passed their credit checks or their criminal background checks because there's been a, a mistake in the system. And they opened the floodgate to take 650,000 federal retirement by maintaining that these people were criminals or by maintaining that they'd done something wrong. And we're watching that as it comes to fruition now. They are nailing left and right federal employees. They don't care. And and our main focus has been on law enforcement, it has been on all of these useful idiots. Please, please open your eyes and realize what's going on because they use you first to discharge their congressional bankrupt state. And this is exemplified in Nazi Germany itself. When the Bayer Corporation came in as the Republic of Germany, it came in through the World Court and it said, we'd like to indemnify Poland. There's too much overhead. And at that point in time, what you saw as Nazi Germany was them cutting the overhead. They were killing federal and state employees by the bushel to cut the overhead. Citizens always, always, always produce. They always patronize. They always can be pit up against each other. And there's always different market conditions. But the overhead is always overhead. And everybody needs to open their eyes right now because I do not want to see that occur again. That's, that's like my nightmare is to watch as, as they're cannibalizing law enforcement, as they're cannibalizing federal agents, as they're cannibalizing teachers and other overhead without without any remorse, without any mercy, without any thought to them, they already hold their retirements in the municipal coffers under the Reese Act, the Employee Retirement Insurance Securities Act. They moved all of those retirements into each 
nation in each county upon divorce decrees and other orders. And at that point in time, their insurance requires that they keep it there because they're already taking loans off, off of it. And the only way to facilitate that is to get you into the hospital setting to kill you, to diagnose you through the psychological industry, to criminalize you, diagnose you through the criminal industry. This is how they discharge congressional bankruptcy. They use the human being as a product on a farm. Uh, everybody needs to be aware because this is horrifying. And it ends here. I mean, they're being held accountable. Um, I cannot speak on, on current updates at this time. I expect that I will be able to within the next three days or so. Um, and then, it, but, but do watch the media because it's already occurring and being facilitated, uh, as we speak at a swift rate. Uh, they're nailing attorneys left and right, judges. Left and right. Uh, well, what are the what are they being nailed on? Uh, it, it all depends on the attorney or the uh, level of production. Uh, the um, yesterday we had or today, ex Illinois judge gets two year term in drug scandal. That one was charged around October, I believe it was, uh, with using heroin. And, and uh, one of his friends, his buddy there, another judge, was killed at that time, and he still. Under investigation for that death as well. So everybody, what had happened last August is in our court case, we realized that the human being was being used as the surety. Only a natural person could be a surety under their statutory provisions. Well, we came in and we said, no, they're the ones with the fictional government, and we evidence that the human being has its own government. We have our own house. And so... Um, we had to declare them dead after looking for these judges and looking for these attorneys for, for a long, long time. We couldn't find any because they're always fictional creations. Those are offices. And um, in that, according to the Sustrative I Act, they were declared dead, and now they are the surety. Um, yesterday in Arkansas, a lawyer charged in Hot Springs playing finally turned herself in. She's charged with manslaughter uh, because she had affiliations with the governor and running or something, and he's dropped out of the running for the gubernatorial candidacy at this time. McDonald, um, the hearing reset for former Utah attorney and son's charged with making pop, right, byproduct. He's the new product, so he's going to be charged under 27 U.S.C. 72.11 commercial crimes. You can charge a, a fiction for commercial crimes. You cannot charge a human being for commercial crimes, and that's what we're seeing now. Um, more teenage boys reporting forced sex by women in the U.S. Since 2009, the United Nations has been reporting that the female is the main perpetrator of child sex abuse, female sex abuse, male slave labor, and yet they were never holding her accountable. She was very productive, but she sexually abused a child. That child would be diagnosed. That child would go through the psychological industry. That child would end up in the criminal industry as it was acting out. That's a form of production, and now they're holding her accountable and stopping that production at its inception so that she's no longer allowed to abuse, where before she was specialized under feminism. Uh, FBI raids Calumet Township's clerk office. This one is corrupt activity uh, regarding um, financial stuff. They were not uh, reporting their uh, discharge of congressional bankruptcy, they were actually undercutting the uh, federal state, so the federal state came in and said no more of that. Uh, former principal's conviction upheld in Muncie high school rape case. This guy was asking that his his charges be dropped. He had allowed a child to be sexually abused under his watch. Um, it's just falling apart. That one attorney yesterday, was just, or two days ago, uh, was hilarious, as well as Senator uh, Lee from California out there, uh, the FBI just raised his office, they know 26 of them. Um, that one you can find at Bono's Entertainment on YouTube. All right, folks, welcome back here in the Corporation Nation. With me today is Tammy Pepperman. Oh, Tammy, good stuff. Um, you know, I was just uh, I was just looking up a couple words. I, I looked up the word fidelity because, you know, we, we hear the words. Uh, fidelity is one of the forms of insurance we were talking about. And we hear these words all the time again, and we don't really think about what it means to have fidelity insurance. What a, what a, 
What a bizarre concept when you find out what fidelity actually means. Faithfulness, careful, and exact observations of duty or performance of obligations. Uh, firm adherence to a person or party with which one is united. Uh, that's us. Or to which one is bound loyalty as the fidelity of subjects to their king or government. The fidelity of a tenant or liege to his lord. Uh, observance of the marriage covenant. Is the fidelity of a husband and wife. Uh, and, of course, that refers to the marriage contract. <laughs> Honesty, veracity, adherence to the truth. Uh, but most importantly here, we're talking about loyalty and obligation to duty. So if you, if you, if you want to make sure... Tammy, that your subjects, your citizens, your persons, including your corporations, if you want to in make sure that these entities that you've created are are well that they that they fulfill all of their obligations no matter what, even if they don't, even if they turn out to be a uh, an unemployed bum that somehow they're going to fulfill their obligations, their fidelity, what are you going to do? You're going to put an insurance policy on that uh, labor product. You're, you're, going to, um, you're going to actuarially project what that thing is worth, what the product of its labor is, what its obligations to the state will be, and you're going to put an insurance policy. You're going to create an insurance policy on that in order to... So, I mean, imagine. I, I just... I mean, it's hard to imagine that loyalty is insured, that your your obligations as a good little citizen are insured. Whether you are a good little citizen or not, they're still making money off the basically assumption that you are right i mean that's pretty pretty much what we're talking about it's a bizarre concept but they're ensuring the 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 possibilities right and and it, the insurance on insurance is education it creates the product it's making man in its image it's breaking you and teaching you that you are not you but that you're something else and that's the insurance on insurance it's it, solidifies the game. It's like uh, if you were playing a, a game of poker and you have 52 aces up your sleeve. It's the same format because if you educate a product and you create the product, you're ensuring or guaranteeing what the product is going to do. It's through morality, psychology, and ethics. And the, the foundation of this whole system is education. It's the insurance on insurance. You're guaranteed to produce the way that they need you to produce at any given moment in time because you're observing other productive members or being told what is a productive member of society through television programming and radio broadcasting. And when I grow up, I want to be that. Well, when you're seeking something, you are not yourself. You are not yourself. You're something else already. And so you're seeking those titles. And, and that's what Jesus was so adamant about. Divest yourself of all the possessions. You drop all those titles. Stop seeking to be and just be. And once you're just being, you're no longer predictable. You're no longer the product. You're no longer ensuring or guaranteeing these the effects to occur. I mean, they're not just, they're ensuring your future as well. They've got future tradings on these securities. Yeah. They've got, they're hedging the bet at the municipal level. Well, how did they do that? They have the workers on the ground through fourth generation warfare or going to a city conflict to make these things occur. If you need to get a speeding ticket, you're going to get a speeding ticket. If you need to die in the hospital setting, they have actors that will kill you in the hospital setting. If you need to get in a, in a one-car accident, they're going to cause the one-car accident. If your house needs to burn down, they're going to burn your house down. And they just started just now, since August now, uh, since we made them a surety, uh, they are nailing them for that as well. They got uh, an insurance agent, uh, sheriff down in uh, Florida, not even a month and a half ago, uh, within an investigation called Floods and Flames, and they had charged him with insurance fraud. Now, that's their function. The sheriff, 
before, uh, in the Henderson case, when I was going through an Erica and Jeffrey Henderson uh, case, they had witnessed the sheriff throwing flares into abandoned homes and, and dry fields in California to set the wildfires that occur. Who cashes in on that? Congress, the municipality. You cannot industrialize any area unless you raise it to the ground first. You have to burn it down in order to build it. And they did the same thing with Katrina. They're doing the same thing right now in Syria. They're doing the same thing right now in, in Crimea. It's the same confederacy. The Russian Confederacy Federation is in confederacy with Congress. It's 1941 Atlantic Charter. This is all the same business model. This is how you make the business go around. You burn everything to the ground, and then you rebuild it. You make people refugees, traffic them across the globe. You're earning money on these human beings left and right. These are never losers until now. Now they're being held accountable. But it's, it's been horrifying up until now, living in this marquee. It's a marquee when you go back to the original um, houses. It's not just the House of Representatives, go back to the House of Gallon. It says, look, all we have to do is tell these people that a bunch of dead guys told us what to do because they, they have memories like goldfish here. We can tell them anything. And that's what they've always counted on, the media presentation. How? What are you going to buy into? How much are you going to believe? How much are you going to take Job and still patronize? the Lord God right there in your garden. How much are you going to take? And Job took a lot of stuff while the attorneys and the landlord played with him that whole time. They wiped out his family. They took his businesses. They took his farm. This is exactly what you and everybody else is going through. The, the Bible refers to you and what happens throughout your entire life and how many titles you take up. You can be Job. You can be Judas. You can be Jesus. You can be Paul, you can be any other Levite or tax man, you can be a judge, you can facilitate acts, whatever else. But ultimately, it comes down with revelation. As soon as you are revealed for what you are, you are known for your works and actions, and you will be held accountable for those things. That's what that book is talking about. It's telling you, hey, look, you're God. They taught you that you're not God, and now they pretend to be your God. You patronize that thing, call it Father. But wait a second, Jesus says, no, don't call it your father. Wait, measure that. Measure that with your logic in your head and, and realize, you know, what is going on here in Genesis. It, it stems from the doctrine of a biogenesis, meaning away from life, mind, and soul. Exodouche means away from God, outside of God, exodus. And so if you're outside of God, if you're patronizing a judge that comes down from a hill that tells you that you're the one that's holding everybody, don't go to that judge. He's going to cash in by charging people rent on your body after he harms you or his minions harm you. That is the construct of this corporation, this incorporated state called the Confederacy. What percentage would you say of the Bible, uh, dividing it into the old and the new, um, what percentage would you say is to, when it when it says the word God? I mean, obviously, when it's not capitalized, or it says the word Lord or Lord God. How, how many? How much of the time is it speaking uh, to the spiritual realm, and how much of the time is it talking to the temporal to the temporal Lord acting as God on Earth, the, the man pretending wearing a fish hat and uh, <laughs> and pretending to be the vicar of Christ. How, 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 what would you say the percentage of the Bible is referring to the king as God? And this confuses people, of course. Right. The very first page of Genesis refers to God, and it says that God took up concepts. When you read the, the Greek translation out of the White Test Bible, it says God collected the concepts of night and day, heaven and earth, and after that point in time, the Lord God or the landlord has so many concepts. Man is a legal creation. I've got my big uh, dictionary open. Of course, you know my cat wants to lay on it. But um, I was just I was just reading the uh, definition. I was thinking over the break too. You know, I was like, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we talk about the Bible, and, and like you said, the, the 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 first part of the Bible, of course, it says God created the earth, the heavens, and the earth. Of course, the fill the firmament, right? Well, 
that's not any different than the beginning of the Bible for science, which says that a big bang happened and it created everything out of nothing. It's, um, it's, a, it's a religious view. It means simply, I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know how the earth was created. Any man who claims that uh, should be <laughs> guillotined. The arrogance that must come with 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 the, with, with purporting such knowledge uh, is is absolutely uh, astounding to me. Uh, as is the ridiculousness of the Big Bang theory, uh, which at best is a wild speculative guess. There's actually been. Um, Disproven in many ways. We won't go into that today. But um, so, again, you, you have a book that opens with the concept of, of God and that there is a creator and that that is what we should be uh, focusing on and pleasing uh, to keep the creation as tenants uh, of that creator in his world. <laughs> Kidding. Um <sighs> And that's probably the difference between the Bible of science and the Bible of um, of 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 God is that there seems to be no responsibility in science. Um, what uh, I, I was looking up the word policy, um, and po because the the word insurance and the word policy is, seem to go together, and. Uh, it has some interesting um, some interesting definitions. The policy in commerce is the writing or instrument by which a contract of indemnity is affected between the insurer and the insured or the instrument containing the terms or conditions by which a person or company undertakes to indemnify another person or company against losses of property and it goes on, and then of course you have to see the word uh, indemnity, which is an important word because it, man, that's a simple definition. It's a security. Oh, what's traded on the markets? That's right, securities. An indemnity is security given to save harmless. Um, da, 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 a written, uh, a writing or pledge by which a person is secured against future. Loss. A person is secured against future loss. So you wonder why they're trading prisoners in the in the prisoner exchange market for securities with QCIP numbers. You wonder all securities have a QCIP number. You wonder why they're trading mortgages. Why they're see these are all contracts. They're paper. They're they're not really trading physical. People, they're trading the fiction that is attached through surety to these people, and of course, the people are the victims. The, they're they're just along for the ride because they have no idea what the heck's happening to them. So, an insurance policy, again, is an indemnity against the person. Uh, you know, no matter what that person does, and that again includes uh, corporations. Um, well. Since the Fourteenth um, Amendment, the corporations were held harmless. That's to sell harmless. the The original indemnification here came in 1802 with the Convention for Indemnification of 1802 between Spain and the United States. You can find that at Avalon, and I'll send you over that link in a moment. That was something major because each policy then was by act of enablement. For example, Alabama the 22nd state, enabling act of the Congress of the United States, the 2nd of March, 1819, it entered the Union, or the mutual insurance policy that had been maintained since the Perpetual Union was established as the United States of America, which, of course, is a style. It's a chain of events or congressional action. So this policy, you are... It's sometimes your writers on the policy, R-I-D-E-R, you're writers. You're you're riding along on this vessel. You're you're um. It, it, when you go back to Genesis, the first page in the creation of man in in something's image, it maintains that whoever created everything 
created those that creep it and called it good. When you go back to the foundations of Greek, anthropo is a higher thinking being that creeps. That's us. When you turn that into man, a legal fiction or a creation of the mind or a concept, that's where you run into the game of risk, which is, have you ever played the game of risk? Absolutely. It's taking over what? Continents. So yep. that word con means with and tenants. And what you're doing is you're, you're teaching or educating a being to be a tenant of your land, to patronize you. That's what this game is. It's all an insurance. It's a game of risk, taking over with tenants. And you can see this in, in their deeds, in their counter deeds, um, in their enablement act. Um, the federal state enabled these new states to come in and, and maintain those revenue streams through the original bank, the 13 colonies established in the 1789 uh, Judiciary Act. And that's what it comes down to. It's just stacking human beings. And the sad part is that humanity isn't just sitting around as they're negotiated on the other side because when you have a stock, and you, when you go to the etymology on gender, that stems from genus. When you claim to be a female or a male, you're a new species or stock option. Now, these stocks, yes, they're traded, but the back end or the front end of insurance is on the bottom line, the ground troops in that municipality, guaranteeing that all of these things occur against you by which you are producing nicely as the stock option for the United States Incorporated. That's a so, guarantee stocking these stocks. And then they head to the bet on top of that. So if, if they bet on your production, they're, they have municipal hedge funds that are hedging that bet. It's the same thing you and I would do if we were playing uh, uh Blackjack together. You know, if you if you are the dealer and you've got an ace showing, am I going to insure the bet? That's what a hedge fund is. It's insuring that original bet. So if I were to, but I, if I were to say, but Tammy, the Bible says uh, that uh, man was created in the image of God. What does that mean? Man was created in the Lord God's image. It, it says that it starts using the word Lord. Uh, towards the bottom of the first page. And after that, it only mentions God. Like when they're attacking Job, it mentions God and Satan and the landlord. That means that, yes, we're going to tell you about this God, and, and you're going to believe that you're a bad boy and a bad girl because all of these things are happening to you. You can't understand why they're happening to you. But that's actually the uh, Scarlet Weapons Require Wars. Here's all of these situations happening. Oh, my grandmother died just now, and she died really, re I mean, I'll, I'll just pick up from, you know, my life. My husband's killed in 2000 through the medical industry. Okay, and, and at that time, I couldn't see what it was, of course. And so, you know, what did I do to deserve that? So then I, just, I got a, I, just got about a minute left, just to let you know. It, it, but it's all these concepts, and we hold on to these concepts, and we're earning the right to be, and that is the guaranteed productivity. Because we're taught to earn the right to be, if we're slapped and given a ticket or something, we're going to earn the right to be. I don't want to be a bad girl. I don't want to be a bad boy. I want to earn the right to be. If we're called a bad mom or a bad dad, where do we find ourselves? In court producing for the attorney. It's the same thing over and over and over again. This is just productive line after production line. In corporation. Tammy Pepperman, thank you so much for joining me again. It's always a pleasure. We'll certainly have you back sometime. Um